A Financial Advisor Service Guide Chapter 1 Financial Services Information I'm against financial advisors, managers, and planners. The reason I'm against financial advisors is that money is not rocket science. It's not that hard to understand savings accounts, savings bonds, stock, funds, and other investments. Sometimes it's best not to invest your money. It's better to save it in a safe savings bond or account because a lot of investment vehicles lose a lot of money. When it comes to money, all of us are greedy to some extent and all of us get tempted if somebody gives us a big pile of money to manage. The field is rife with con artists and nickel and dimer churners, people who constantly buy and sell stocks with your money to earn commissions. The financial management industry has shrouded itself into the image that money is deep and complicated. People need a professional advisor who will help them get the most out of their money but it's not true. It's an illusion. There are laws against insider trading therefore no financial advisor knows anything more than you can easily learn on your own. If you want to invest in stocks, go to the library, get the most recent money magazines, make a list of the 20 best stocks they're recommending and pick from them. They act like they're there to help you but they want to make money off you. That's the bottom line. What other profession is there where these guys get rewarded when they make you money using your money not the year own then when they lose your money, they have no accountability whatsoever. It's a sucker business. I'm telling you not to hire them. Start up your own account at a discount brokerage like TD Ameritrade. This profession attracts con artists because it's all about other people's money and how easy it is to steal it and if they get caught, most of them don't even go to jail. They pay it back and get probation. Don't trust anyone with your money but you. If you were smart enough to earn lots of money, why would you entrust it to someone you barely know? Like I said, money knowledge isn't very hard. You got this book and hundreds of books at number 332 at the library. If you're simple, just buy government savings bonds and keep some emergency money in a savings account. It's all about making commissions for them. Most don't care about you. They care about making money. I personally don't believe that anyone needs a planner because you should educate yourself. It's really very easy. Some people say that a good financial planner can make you lots of money. If they charge you a commission on what they sell you, the logic is that they'll sell you as much as they can to make money without regard for your true interests. For the record, there are three ways a financial planner can charge you for services. Percentage Commission Per Trade Every time the financial planner buys some investment product with your money, he takes a percentage cut of the cost for himself. This can easily lead to churning, making lots of trades to make money on commissions. Percentage of Account Value Per Year He or she charges a percentage of how much money he or she are managing for you per year. Flat fee or hourly fee. You either pay an agreed on fee or pay by the hour. If you plan to use a financial planner, follow these rules. Financial planning is unregulated. Anybody can call themselves a financial planner. The licensing organizations for financial planners are voluntary. You can only join some if you have enough formal education and no criminal convictions for fraud. Ask what license they have then check with either the state or national organization. A planner with a Series 7 license is authorized to deal with all types of investments. Anything less like a Series 6 means the guy doesn't have good qualifications. Even better are people with Series 8, 24, or 65 licenses. Make sure your advisor is covered by Securities Investor Protection Corporation Insurance. This doesn't protect you from losses on your investments but if the investment company goes bust, the money in your account is insured up to $500,000. The longer a planner has been in business, the more likely he's honest but there are exceptions like Bernie Madoff who strung people along for 25 years. The higher the minimum the advisor takes means he's arrogant enough to have a minimum which is good for you because the con artists will take anyone's money. How many people close accounts with this guy every year? He couldn't be very good if people leave him. Has he ever had disciplinary action from the State and Federal Securities Commission? How many complaints does he get in general? 
You might even be able to find this on BBB.org. Type his name in or the name of his company. Does he talk to you personally or pass you off to assistants? Ask him if he's hourly fee only or does he charge a commission too? Commissions are the worst, especially if he gets a lump sum commission as soon as he gets your money. Your best bets are a fee only advisor or an advisor who charges a set annual percentage fee based on the size of your account with him so his fee is fixed, not dependent on commissions. There are a lot of pseudo-advisors at banks, insurance companies, and accounting companies but most of these people don't have advisor licenses. The most qualified advisors are the ones running their own financial management business. The golden rule is to use a financial planner who charges only a flat, annual asset management fee and offers advice only, not selling anything that he has a vested interest in or not getting a commission for all transactions he makes. The trick is to find a good one. Virtually anyone can take the title of consultant and go into business. If a consultant takes a percentage commission out of how much of your money he invests up front, he's at least part scam. Offer him a percentage of your investment gains instead and see what he says. If you do decide to hire a planner, make sure he's good up front. He may be certified, licensed by the state and chartered but being the untrusting, independent soul that I have become from experience. I say get up off your butt, learn, go to the library and just read through some of the investment magazines and books, number 332, then make your own decisions. Don't be intimidated by their jargon. It's all very basic once you understand the fundamentals. Don't use lawyers, tax preparers, or insurance agents to give you investment advice. Use your own head. Financial planners can wipe you out quickly. Invest your money yourself after you educate yourself. A Client's Bill of Rights Amendment 1. I have the right to deal with someone I can trust. Amendment 2. I have the right to deal with someone who has a special area of expertise or unique capability not found in other people. Amendment 3. I have the right to deal with someone who listens to me and takes an interest in my needs and concerns. Amendment 4. I have the right to deal with someone who not only critically evaluates a variety of investment and insurance products, but also offers them with an eye towards appropriateness and suitability. Amendment 5. I have the right to expect performance. This means not only from the investment and insurance products we select, but also from performance in enhancing my overall financial well-being. Amendment 6. I have the right to deal with someone who instills in me the feeling that my money is being treated as though it were their own. Amendment 7. I have the right to deal with someone who prioritizes my short and long term goals and develops a plan so I can achieve them in the most efficient manner. Amendment 8. I have the right to deal with someone who delivers information to me at a level which I can understand. Amendment 9. I have the right to deal with someone who is committed to working with me over a long period of time. Amendment 10. I have the right to deal with someone who, by virtue of education, experience, technical competence and adherence to ethical practices, is recognized as a top professional in their field. A list of financial advisor titles. Some common financial advisor professions are as follows. CA, chartered accountant. CFA Chartered Financial Analyst CFP, Certified Financial Planner Council CFP, Chartered Financial Planner CGA, Certified General Accountant CHFC, Chartered Financial Consultant CIM, Certified Investment Manager CLU, Chartered Life Underwriter CPA, Chartered Public Accountant PFP Personal Financial Planner or Professional Financial Planner RFP, Registered Financial Planner SFC, Specialist in Financial Counseling Financial Advisor Organizations ACAinternational.org, Association of Credit and Collection Professionals AFPonline.org, Association for Financial Professionals AIMR.org, CFA, Chartered Financial Analyst Institute. FMA.org, Financial Management Association. 
fpanit.org, Financial Planning Association. fwa.org, Financial Women's Association. gfoa.org, Government Finance Officers Association. iaap-hq.org, International Association of Administrative Professionals. nfoa.org, Native American Finance Officers Association. nasd.com, National Association of Securities Dealers, NASD. SIA.com, Securities Industry Association. National Association of Personal Financial Advisors. 888-333-6659. NAPFA.org. Financial Planning Association. 800-282-7526. FPANIT.org. Financial Advisor slash Financial Services List Websites AdvisorNow.com BROKER-REFERRAL.com Business.com slash Directory slash Financial underscore Services Kali.org slash Business slash Financial underscore Services slash Financial underscore Planning FAPAGES.com FINANCIAL-ADVISER.com Global Directory of Specialist Financial Advisors FinancialAdvisorExpo.com FINANCIAL-ADVISORS.Respond.com FINANCIAL-PLANNING.com Nelnet.com slash catalog slash Dimcom and Nelson's Directory of Investment Managers Stockbrokers.com, Stockbrokers, and other financial professionals by name WiserAdvisor.com Wows.db.com, Women on Wall Street Fee-based financial advisors slash no commissions financial advisors There is a type of account called a wrap account offered by the major brokerages where you get a broker and a money manager to give you advice for a flat fee of about 3% Fpanit.org Napfa.org, 888 fee only, personal financial advisors National Association of Personal Financial Advisors 3250 North Arlington Heights Road Number 109 Arlington Heights, Illinois 60004 800 366 2732 888 fee only 800 333 6659 napfa.org Call for a free list of advisors the advantage here is that they charge a flat fee, not COMM Sissian. Investment Firms Info One step away from commercial banks are investment brokerage firms which deal mostly with stocks, bonds, commodities, and mutual funds although increasingly, they're competing with commercial banks by offering cash management accounts which enable the customer to invest in their securities and have regular checking abilities as well as an ATM card. They advise clients, sell securities, and will and deal for themselves a law insider trading. There are many different types of jobs in this area of finance ranging from research to trading in the bullpen on an exchange. They usually want a business degree to get you in the door. They may start you off as a stockbroker where you try to go out and sell stocks to people. You can find the addresses of these companies in Polk's Bank Directory and the financial section of directories like Moody's and Standard & Poor's Directory of Corporations. The AT&T toll-free phone book lists hundreds of them. Sometimes the money magazines publish lists of some of these companies. Some money magazines are Accounting News, American Banker, Barron's, Business Week, Forbes, Fortune, New York Times. Wall Street Journal and Investors Business Daily. Look them up in the a periodical directory at the library. There are also a lot of discount brokerage firms springing up. Some investment brokerages. J.C. Bradford. 170 4th Avenue North. Nashville, Tennessee, 37219. 615-748-9000. Brown Brothers Harriman. 559, Wall ST. NYC 100,055. 212 483 1818. First Boston Corp. Park Ave. Plaza. NYC 10,055. 212 
909-2000. First Jersey Securities. 50 Broadway. NYC 10004. 212-269-5500. Goldman Sachs. 85 Broad. NYC 10004. 212-902-1000. EF. Hutton. 1. Battery Park Plaza. NYC 10004. 212-742-5000. Kidder Peabody. 10. Hanover Square. NYC 10005. 212-747-2000. Morgan Stanley. 1251 Ave. Of the Americas. NYC 10020. 212-974-4000. O'Connor Partnerships. 141 West Jackson Boulevard. Number 3140. Chicago, Illinois 60604. 312-322-9525. Payne Weber. 140 Broadway. NYC 10005. 212-437-2121. Salomon Brothers. 1. New York Plaza. NYC 10004. 212-747-7000. Software for Financial Professionals. AmericasOft.com. Anti-money laundering and transaction trend monitoring software financial organizations. Antimonylaundering.net. MONEY-SOFTWARE.com, Financial Planning Software for the Professional Advisor Finance Professional Background Check Ask him or her what professional organizations they belong to then go to those websites, look them up and see if there are complaints against them. Do a background check on a financial advisor. Finare.org slash investor information slash investor protection slash check the background of your investment professional slash national verification dot com slash consumers. Ethicscheck.com. SEC.gov.